Well, thanks for joining me on my Halloween 2 review, a movie that is so bad that I can honestly say ranks among the worst in the franchise quite easily. I'm actually surprised Rob Zombie even did this movie after saying on multiple occasions that he was not going to be doing a Halloween 2. Are you talking about doing another in a series? I'm not talking about it. I mean, I wanted to do the one film with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and then be done with it. So does that mean that there, if, if this is, does well and receive well, that there'd be a sequel? Probably. Not with me. I mean, I'm done. I don't want to do any more. I mean, I did everything I wanted to do in this movie, but, you know. So you know that done deal, no matter what. Even yeah, no matter what, I wouldn't do another one, but obviously, if it makes money, they're going to make it as many as they can. That's just the way things work. But then again, he also said that he didn't see the point of doing remakes, and we all know how that turned out. So I guess it's not so surprising after all. So just like the last video, I'm gonna have to warn you that this review may include some clips of graphic violence and bad language. I'm gonna censor it the best that I can, but I just wanted to put up a disclaimer right from the beginning for all you out there. And you should also know that this review may include somewhat excessive use of the word shitty. Overall, I think Halloween 2 is a pretty shitty movie with shitty writing, shitty characters, shitty acting, shitty plot and a really shitty ending. Rob Zombie has since defended the film saying, I think it's a great movie, but I wish it had a different title. If it was called something else, then people might have watched it and accepted it for what it was. Yes, because a different title would have saved this movie completely. I didn't go into this movie expecting the original Halloween 2. My problems with these movies lie in them as standalone films not because they're not carbon copies of the originals, but just for fun, I decided to come up with some alternate titles for the movie. Like, Michael Dreams of Horses, and my favorite, Hobo Joe and the Spooky Mask. The movie starts with a quote about white horses, which is important because it lets you know that this movie is going to have its fair share of pretentious symbolism. So the movie starts basically where the last movie left off. Lori and Annie are taken to the hospital and Michael is put into a body bag. So on the way to the morgue, these guys are joking and discussing necrophilia. You know, Typical chit chat because as we've already established in the first movie, it appears that the majority of people in Haddonfield are either white trash, sexual deviants, or just overall shitty people. So they hit a cow in the middle of the road. I'll say that again in case you thought you misheard me. They hit a cow in the middle of the road and Michael cuts one of their heads off and then walks towards a vision of his ghost mom with the white horse. Cause you know, remember the white horse from the beginning? Yeah, this is gonna be an ongoing theme here. Anyways, we're back in the hospital when Michael shows up and starts killing people, like this nurse by stabbing her 10 times, and one more, just for good measure. It's at this point that you think Rob might be referencing the original Halloween 2, since that whole movie took place in a hospital, but according to Rob Zombie, that's not the case at all. So that opening scene with Laurie in the, in the hospital is not an intentional homage to Halloween 2? Definitely not, I couldn't give a crap about that movie. <laughs> Anyways, Wilford Brimley shows up with some donuts, even though he's gotta be careful with those on account of the whole diabetes thing. So Michael kills him with an ax and proceeds to kill Lori once and for all. But wait, it's okay because it was all a dream. Keep in mind that we are now 25 minutes into the movie, so this is actually kind of jarring. I mean, how much of it was a dream? I'm assuming it was the hospital stuff, but how much of the hospital stuff? I mean, there were shots of them in the hospital earlier that were intercut with Michael escaping. But whatever, it's now two years later and Lori is taking her medications in a shitty bathroom that I can only imagine was modeled after Rob Zombie's. Lori is living with Annie and her father and it's in this scene where, once again, Rob Zombie's brilliant dialogue is put on display. One f***ing day at a time. You know what, if I hear that f***ing phrase one more f***ing in time. I mean, she just sits there in her leather chair and judges me like she's God. It's her job, Lori. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> Boo fing who for you? See? You don't fing care. Right. I don't fing care. So, Dr. Loomis is a complete self absorbed egomaniac in this movie for some reason. It's really amazing how fast Rob Zombie is able to make you dislike one of the only likable characters. Dr. Loomis is a psychologist who tried to help Michael Myers for 15 years, and now that he's wrote a book about the whole thing, he's suddenly a narcissistic asshole who isn't concerned that the body of Michael Myers is missing and treats people like crap for no reason? Well, I think it's a mistake. Oh, yeah, you do, do you? Yes. Well, when I want your opinion, I'll beat it out of you. Yes, if he wants her opinion, he'll beat it out of her. This whole transformation from doctor to douchebag is so incredibly unnecessary and unbelievable. 
Here, now take that and go sit in the car. Go on, get your ass in there. So Michael goes into a barn and has a vision of his ghost mom telling him that he has to go and kill Lori. Oh, okay, so I guess the mom is calling the shots now? It's funny how this never occurred in the first movie. I mean, you don't think this whole thing was just put into the script as an excuse to get his wife into the movie, do you? That's crazy talk. And it's funny because this whole thing feels like it's been done before. In another horror movie? You know, a little franchise called Friday the 13th. The only difference is that in Friday the 13th it made sense because the kids killed Jason's mother in the first movie. Michael goes out and kills a bunch of rednecks because they were being shitty to him and proceeds to eat their dog. I mean, geez, Mike, you were eating dog in the first movie. Switch it up a bit. Try a cat. Like this one. Looks tasty. Then we have some more pretentious symbolism. I bet if you cut all of these sequences together, it could easily be mistaken for some sort of crappy student art film. I guess Lori is having the same visions as Michael and they happen more and more throughout the movie. I've seen some people online defending this movie, saying it's more of a psychological thriller. Well, then I gotta say, this is one poor ass psychological thriller. Now this is just me, but I would consider some good examples of psychological thrillers to be like, uh, Silence of the Lambs, The Machinist. If you really want to mess with your head, check out Jacob's Ladder. I guess we're supposed to be seeing Laurie's descent into insanity throughout this movie. It's just too bad the movie does a really shitty job at it. It seems that Rob Zombie's method of showing her psychological deterioration is through scenes of redundant visions and having her scream a lot and say f a bunch of times in her car. <laughs> A good example of a movie where someone slowly loses their sanity piece by piece would be The Shining. Of course, Laurie has just discovered that Michael is her brother and she just can't handle it anymore. She's definitely losing her mind, which is why suddenly she jumps up and says she doesn't care anymore and that she wants to go out and get drunk. Her friends, of course, being shitty characters as well, take her out to a big party because we all know the best thing to do when someone is obviously emotionally unstable is to fill them full of alcohol and see what happens. So Lori goes home and finds that Michael killed Annie. Still don't know why he didn't do it in the first place, but whatever. Lori runs away and Annie's dad comes home to find Annie dead. And you know what, I'm just gonna play this part for you guys. And the Oscar goes to Anyways, Michael takes Lori to a barn and then there's this whole sequence here where the ghost mom is trying to get Michael to kill Lori. Of course, the cops and Loomis show up and Loomis tries to get Michael to stop doing what he's doing. So instead, Michael goes ahead and stabs Dr. Loomis. The cops just unload on Michael completely and Lori comes out, picks up the knife, moves towards Loomis, and the cops just decide to shoot her too. The last scene is this long white room where Lori sees ghost mom with the white horse and according to what i read online based on the audio commentary on this movie this scene is actually laurie in the afterlife not that it really matters because in the end everybody pretty much dies not that you really cared for the characters anyways michael myers doesn't even wear the mask through most of this movie and why is that exactly without it he just looks pretty much like a lot of the other characters in these movies which also Kind of resemble Rob Zombie. Like I said in the other video, John Carpenter told Rob Zombie to make Halloween his own. And in Halloween 2, he really did. You can see it everywhere. Even the wardrobe, it almost looks like they just raided Rob Zombie's closet. Even the characters that we should care for end up being unlikable by the second movie. Dr. Loomis started out just as he did in the original movie, being the one character who really cared about Michael and tried to help him. He was the only one who truly knew how dangerous Michael Myers was and tried to convince everybody else. By the second movie, however, he turns into such a dislikable character that even when he tries to redeem himself at the end of the movie, it's all in vain. He stops nothing. Everybody dies. In the first movie, Lori is somewhat of a likable character, but we're not given enough time to connect with her before the killing starts. In the second movie, she's reduced to an obnoxious emotional mess who is too angry and stubborn to even begin to find the strength to start dealing with the issue at hand. One of the reasons I liked Halloween H2O so much is the moment where Lori decides to stop running 
and goes after Michael to face him at her own will. Lori fights back against Michael a few times in the original Halloween 1 and 2 and in the remake, but in H2, she's merely running and hiding the whole time. Halloween 2 takes both our protagonists and removes their humanity, which disconnects them from the audience and doesn't let them redeem themselves. Now taking on a franchise such as Halloween is extremely difficult, because there are so many expectations coming from the fan base, and I will give Rob Zombie credit for taking this in the direction that he wanted to go and sticking with his vision. But just because something is different doesn't mean that we have to like it. When they made Indiana Jones meets the space aliens, I didn't sit there at the end of the movie thinking, well that was that was good because it was different. By the way, this film was shot on 16mm film instead of typical 35mm, give it that kind of like grungy grainy look. Uh, for reference, another movie that was shot on 16mm was The Wrestler, and I think it really worked with The Wrestler. I also wanted to talk about how in the original movie Michael Myers drives around quite a bit. In an interview, Rob Zombie said that he had a problem with the idea that Michael Myers is somehow able to drive. And while I will agree that the image of Michael Myers behind the steering wheel of a station wagon is kind of silly when you think about it, I don't think the idea that he's able to drive to be inconceivable at all. In the original movie, Michael Myers was possessed by evil. He was a supernatural being which explains why he was pretty much impossible to kill. So I don't think the idea of someone possessed by evil being able to operate a vehicle to be that weird at all. I guess in Rob Zombie's mind, Michael Myers should be able to flip over a car with his bare hands, resist being shot in the back a bunch of times, stabbed, and shot in the face at point blank range, but stick shift, that should just... That should just stop him right in his tracks. Well guys, this review took me a really long time to do. I'm happy that it's finally done. Please like and share the video. Of course, happy Halloween. And on a final note, I should mention that they are currently working on Halloween 3. And in an interview, Rob Zombie said he's definitely not working on it. So we all know what that means. Nothing. Everything's shitty in this movie. Everything looks shitty. Even the pizza looks shitty. I don't even know how that's possible.